I'm really glad I wore a white shirt today. Our buggy driver. I'm currently running the buggy. It's been like war of the buggy. Okay, we'll see if we can still do this. Go, 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 go. I'm really out of practice. He's just gonna think I suck at this. Good morning, it's Saturday, it's day two of wheat harvest. Yesterday went really good, I don't know. Did you take any footage yesterday? Uh, I did, uh, near the end because of uh, our companions. We had some visitors, we had some visitors show up yesterday, so, um, which was lovely. We had some more Nuffield visitors come, Helen and Chris, and we, it was kind of like having our kids again, so Mark took one on the combine, I took one on the tractor, and then we switched. Throwback, eh? Yeah. Anyways, uh, we were reminded last night on Twitter that perhaps we should have had our water wagon hooked up and like a some sort of tillage equipment. So we're going to run down to the to the farm down the road here and grab our joker uh, just to prepare for the worst, preparing for fire, which hopefully we don't have. But it's drought and it's hot and that's typically when things can happen. So we've been pretty cautious we don't park the truck in the field like no nothing low riding goes no in the field hot exhaust touching the stocks. yeah no hot exhaust talk Double. touching so we do our best but we thought you know what that's maybe a sign to just get take a few minutes this morning and get prepped prep for the worst expect the best is that how that goes expect the worst and get the best oh i don't know that's totally backwards <laughs> Thank you. I love your guts, too. And I'm going to let you go before your guts end up on my shirt. Okay. 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 Second question. I love your guts. I love your guts. <laughs> We have a pretty funny radio station from London that Mark and I listen to all the time. It's a rock station and uh, there's two DJs and we had a big, one of our very first rock concerts in London uh, called Rock the Park. It's a big mu music festival. And um, the first night Alanis Morissette, she's Canadian, rock on, I love her so much. Um, she opened, she was a headliner the first night. So they did a, uh, they always do these fun little segments. And so they were just interviewing a pretty uh, intoxicated young lady, I think. She's gonna hate her life the next day. Also, I'm really glad I wore a white shirt today. Our buggy driver. Child. Day two, out in the field. We don't have much left in this field, um, and Jess is actually helping us today, so she's just coming with her first load here on the buggy. I might actually give her the camera for a little bit today. You've, I think, I think you've heard from Mark a little bit. Where's he going? He's just turning around. Yeah, I thought maybe you guys could have a little chitty chat with Jess. Turn the fan down real quick so you can actually hear me. What's up everyone? Welcome back. How's it going? Been a long time, no see. I'm currently running the buggy. Boom. I'm actually just sitting here waiting for mom. We are just about done with this field. I think there's 
one more pass or maybe two passes left but dad should be able to hold it in the grain tank and then he'll empty out to me once he's done and then I'll empty out into mom and then yeah <laughs> I need to put you up you're way too heavy COVID pounds she is here oh my god your exposure dude mom is back Mom just made it back and now I have to go empty, so I will talk to you in a second. The last pass. Boom. Can you even see me? Okay, so I am currently driving down to the end to meet Dad so he can empty out into me. And then we're probably going to try and start another field. I think the field across the road we're going to try and see if it's ready. If not, I think these are the only two fields that will be ready so far. But, we'll see. This is actually the field that we're doing a fungicide trial on the wheat. Uh, I have, I think we have four trials. Um, so that's kind of fun. In this trial, we pretty much just compare our product to competitors. So, that's cool. Pretty neat. Okay, I'm gonna go to the end now. Peace. Hello, I don't know if Jess filmed it all today, but it is 6.42. Mark and I are doing, it's been like War of the Buggy, this wheat harvest, which has only been two days so far. And I finally won the war because everybody else actually has a life. Let me shut this off, it's loud. So uh, Monty had plans tonight with his grandson and Jess, Jess was going out with her friends tonight. And um, so that means Mark and I are the only ones literally with no life. So we are going to continue wheat harvest. We are nicely in our second field. This is, why does she have the exposure so high? We are nicely through our second field. I think we'll be able to finish this front portion of the field. The field's divided in half because there's a creek right in between the two. Um, so weather, and I think that got planted a little later even than this field. So it might not even be ready yet. Um, and then after that we only have one field left because we didn't get all the wheat we wanted planted planted last fall uh, we're happy that we got what we did get and I think yields are decent so that is a relief considering nothing else has seen rain forever I think our corn is really quite close to wanting to tassel soon and uh, there's rain in the forecast but every single day the percentage goes down so it's just we are we're just sitting on pins and needles just uh, hoping for some moisture. Anyway, the wheat is uh, very, the wheat is very dry. We're under 13% now. Uh, it's kind of been going down all day. I'm trying to give you updates from the wag my wagon duty. Uh, that's about it, I think. And the test weight, I have no idea what good test weight on wheat is. Uh, if I showed you that wheat from last fall, you wouldn't have even thought it would have come up this spring. So winter wheat is an amazing crop. This is why we try to grow different crops so we can spread out our risk a little bit, get these guys harvested, um, at a different time of the year, so if we do have a drought, um, hopefully the crop is mature by by the time it really gets hit with it. What's the yield at on that farm? On this farm? Yeah, the iPad was saying how many bushels per acre. It's saying 80 already. This farm's running well, I think, too, but I don't really know. Anyway, he's going to dump soon here, and uh, this is my first time back on the buggy in forever, so I better uh, pay attention. Okay, we'll see if we can still do this. You guys could see this camera. It's like a glare. It's like looking into the sun. Literally looking into the sun. Oh my god. Sorry, I cannot see in that camera. It's so glary. He's just gonna think I suck at this. Go, 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 
go, go, go, go. It is a gorgeous night and we're on our last pass and I love getting footage of the last pass of this field. We're not done yet. Good morning, it's Sunday. I think Mark's already out here doing my job, so I'm just kind of hiding. Uh, we filled wagons last night because it was just the two of us. Uh, so we have one, two, I think three sets that we filled right to the brim. So we are emptying these wagons. We're gonna take them to the field. Uh, the field that's behind the field we did last night. There he is, my little stud muffin. So yeah, we're into the backfield of the field that we were in uh, last night. I can't remember how many acres is that. I think you said 40-ish, 42 maybe. It's actually one of my favorite fields because it's got a really good view. So we'll see what it's like. It's much nicer in the fall when all the colors are changing. We are gonna just work away, pick away this morning at some odd jobs and get there as quick as we can because there's a breeze and it's already sunny and warm and we're probably gonna be able to get right at it. And there's just the two of us. So everything just takes a bit longer without, a, without an actual buggy driver. So I'm gonna be buggy slash wagon driver, I think, again. We got the wagons unloaded, so now Mark is actually transferring a little bit of the wetter wheat into the bin, so we're kind of layering it to blend it off because it's actually going behind wheat that was very, very dry, so like in the 12% range, getting mixed with a couple wagons that were closer to 18. Yeah, so we just kind of layer it in the big bin and basically alleviating the need for the dryer and fuel and money. We keep miscalculating how long getting all this extra stuff in case of fire, like the tillage and a water wagon. We, we're almost tempted to not bring it. And I said, no, let's not tempt fate. Let's have it just in case. Cause we're so far away from home. This is like one of our farthest fields. And we actually have to get through a wheat field to get to this back field. And it's surrounded by beautiful forestry. So I said, I do not want a forest fire. Um, and it backs on to a lot of other neighbors' properties. So I just, I said, let's just bring it, just, just be safe. But yeah, it, uh, it takes a while to get everything dropped off here. All right, we have just arrived. We had a quick lunch and then came back to the back chunk of this field. It is a, actually a really quite pretty field. Um, our in-laws have broiler breeder chickens at the front, so they've got two big barns and then a couple manure storages. Uh, so the field is 
the front field is a little more awkward to open up than the back field. Mark always curses it because there's like acres of barns to get around. However, it is still a really pretty farm, especially back here. And these trees in the fall when they turn, it is just breathtaking. So this is one of my favorite fields and there's quite a bit of elevation. So you can actually see there's a creek. I'm right above a creek right here. And, um, and you can actually see quite far. I think we're high enough up that you can see, well, you can see what the neighbors are doing, which is fun. I'm trying to fathom what Mark just said after taking all morning, bringing equipment down here. He thinks it might be too wet. We did come down and do a chew test and he thought it was good to go. But we we're in a different spot. This is, he's just opening up the field on this headland. So he said he's gonna do a strip down the center of the field just to confirm. Oh boy. I followed Mark back and we did a pass straight through the center. I think we're into the 15s now and like I said yesterday, we need to be 14 or under uh, without having to dry it. So he said, let's just keep it separate. We'll put it in the overhead bin, so the, the wet bin as we call it. Um, and so we're keeping it separate from the wheat we've already done. And it's a different variety anyway, so we were gonna do that anyway because we might keep some of this stuff back for seed for next year. Mark really likes it so far. He said it's yielding really well but it's a bit wetter which we knew it potentially could be because it got planted a little bit later. He's still happy with the variety. The straw is beautiful. It looks a lot like barley straw. Yeah so it might be a keeper in our rotation. It's called Blaze. I don't know who makes it. So we're gonna keep it separate. We may have to put it through the dryer but the stuff we want to keep back for seed we do want to select the driest stuff from the, this field. So we're hoping there's some under 15 that we can nab and put in a couple wagons and just sit on those. That's the plan. All right, I'm on wagon duty. Again, we got the headlands open enough so I could leave the buggy for Mark to fill. Uh, it'll take him a bit to fill it, and while he's filling, I'm gonna empty a set of wagons. I'll run back to the field, jump in the buggy, <laughs> fill a set of wagons again, and just keep doing that. Apparently it pays to refresh your weather app about 250,000 times because it just changed and it's looking like it says 100% chance of rain tonight and there was nothing in the forecast. It was like 40% of like a mil. It's 100% of 10 mil and tomorrow's 90% chance of another 10 mil. So guys, it's probably too late to be like an absolute like life-saving, crop-saving rain, but it's going to do a lot. So we are so grateful. I mean, the corn is like, we call it toilet seat corn. It's just like up, down, up, down. Doesn't look good. And we're going right into tasseling. So if we didn't get this, if we don't get this rain, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> 